Hey guys, so initially this video was going to be a vlog of me in Pisa and in Florence, but it turned out to be an eight minute long week vlog, and I'm still gonna attach this at the end of this clip, but I decided to talk about, at the beginning of this video, my experience as an au pair for the first time and the last time, and yeah, talk about what it was like for me and if I would recommend it to anybody who's considering it. I've been in Siena for the past three months. I'm currently actually, I'm still here. This is the room. It's a mess because I'm packing my stuff and I'm actually leaving tomorrow. I'm leaving Italy for good. I still have pre-recorded vlogs from my trip around Italy, so I'm gonna upload those. But as I'm recording this now, Tomorrow is my last day in Italy and I'm, it's a bittersweet moment. I mean, I'm really excited to go back home for the holidays with my family, but I'm also really going to miss Italy. I'm going to miss the kids for the past three months. Like I said, I've been here in Siena. I've been looking after a seven-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy and oh my goodness, it has been a journey. At the beginning, I honestly wanted to quit immediately. Like, I immediately realized that kids were not my thing, that I was born to be the cool aunt and not the caregiver or the mother, you know? Um, <laughs> I was not meant to be an authority figure for kids. Like, I'm the, the cool person who plays with them and gets rowdy with them, but at the end of the day, when it's time for me to tell them to like stop doing something or telling them to brush their teeth, like I had to learn how to do this. And I also had to learn how to gain the respect, which was the most difficult thing for me because these kids in particular, they go through au pairs every three months. And so I think that at the beginning, they test you and they try to see like, what kind of person you are and if they can walk all over you and so at the beginning they definitely were and i had to learn how to stand my ground and i had to show them who's boss and so once i did that though once i gained their respect they weren't perfect but they definitely listened to me a bit more um and i mean how i gained their respect was honestly scaring them a little bit I don't know if there's a perfect way of gaining kids respect but these kids the devilish children I had to definitely raise my voice and like they saw my scary face like my eyes were so wide my lip was quivering like I was extremely mad one time one night I was making dinner for them and they were acting like devilish children I had a spoon in my hand and one of them yanked the spoon from my hand and just threw it. And then when I looked at him, he was just, he had this like smirk on his face like, yeah, I just did that. And that is when I flipped. I immediately started yelling at them and they saw my scary face. Like whenever I'm angry, I do this thing with my lip where it like quivers and my eyes get like, like you know I'm angry. And they just froze. They saw this version of me and instantly they were like, oh yeah, let's not do that. And they sat down and we just ate dinner in silence and I was so angry. I literally wanted to give them away in that moment. But since then, I gained their respect and I honestly don't know how other au pairs or how other people who work with kids do it. Like, I don't know how you gain kids respect. I don't, but it just, I know now that I'm not meant to work with kids and I don't have to worry about that anymore. But the way I came in their respect was literally yelling at them and like showing them that I was their authority figure. And since that day, they have respected me. They still act like devilish children every once in a while, but I have learned to like control certain emotions. Like I don't lash out at them anymore, but at the beginning, I really wanted to because they were just crazy. I mean, seven and four years old, like that's, 
that's a rebellious age. <laughs> Other than those moments where they act like devilish children, I mean, they are kids. It's gonna happen. They're going to lash out. They're going to act like little poop heads every once in a while. Other than that, it has really been a great experience for me. I really have developed a lot of patience. I've experienced, I think, all the emotions I'm capable of feeling while being with these kids. And I've learned how to cope with certain emotions. And I honestly really do think this experience has allowed me to become a full adult. Like, I now have a glimpse of what it's like to be a mother and a parent. And for now, I know that's not for me being a parent. But for those who do want to become parents, I think being an au pair is a great experience for that. It's getting a little glimpse of parenthood and I'm really grateful for that. It has really been a transformative experience for me and living with them for the past three months has, at first I thought it was going to be awkward, but it really hasn't been awkward. The dad lives in Pisa and we're in Siena, so he lives in a different city. I didn't have to worry about being in the same house as a stranger man, but even then, he's actually really sweet and I had nothing to worry about. When I told my mom I was going to go with a family, it made her happier to know that the dad didn't actually live in the household. So this whole time I have been with the mom and the two kids. And the mom is a doctor, she is logical, she's precise, she's clean, an A-type. I'm the complete opposite of that. And so... <laughs> Luckily, she was at uh, work all day. She is a very busy woman. She, the kids really don't see their parents much. And so that's why when they do lash out, I kind of understand them. Like, they never see their parents. And so I have to be um, empathetic and I have to understand them in that sense. But um, yes, the mom is a certain way. And so I obviously, as their au pair, I have to cater to their lifestyle. And so that was a little tricky at times. Yeah, it was nothing we couldn't work out. It was all fine. And I actually love the mom. She did everything she could to make sure I felt included. And whenever her mom came over, the kid's grandma, like they really treated me like family. And it was an overall great cultural experience. It was really cool to witness how this Italian family lives their life and like for example, they wake up and for breakfast they have a pastry and milk and they eat pasta all the time. And so it was just really cool to get a glimpse of the Italian culture in that sense. And also I am learning Italian, so it was cool to also immerse myself. So it was really cool to actually um, listen to people speak Italian in an everyday conversational way kind of uh, learn more about the language and the culture. So I actually wrote down a few things that I probably had before I took the experience and I thought maybe it could help someone if you're thinking about becoming an, an au pair. I found them, this family, on aupairworld.com and I literally, this was like on a whim, I decided out of nowhere that I wanted to try to be an au pair and like leave. I was tired of my life in LA and I thought I need to do something different, something new. So I got an au pair world and I just messaged different families and this mom in particular reached out to me and she said that the au pair that she originally had planned for bailed on them and she needed someone in the next week or two. And I literally was like, perfect, like I need to get out of here. But the only way I'm going to go is if the flights are cheap. So I looked on the cheap website for flights and I actually found a flight for like 200 and something dollars which I immediately took as a sign. I took it, I ran with it. In the end, it was like one of those cheap airlines that you have to pay for literally everything. So it ended up being around five or six hundred dollars which still isn't too bad. But um, it was not 200 and something, it added up. Is it awkward living with strangers? And the answer is, for me, at the beginning, it was a little awkward because obviously you have to adjust to their lifestyle. It's a different culture as well, so you have to adjust to that. And you have to be open-minded. Like, you can't just 
go to an au pair family in Italy and like start doing things the American way, you have to be open with doing it their way. They do things a certain way that I had to get used to, like when we do the laundry, we hang them up on a clothesline, we don't use the dryer. Or for breakfast, they have pastry and milk. And in the US, I'm used to like a savory breakfast, but here we have a pastry and milk. That's just an example. At night, I have to use, I have to help the kids use the bidet, just like certain things like this. Which, by the way, at first I was a little icked out by the bidet, and now I would love a bidet in my home in the US. Like, I think we all need bidets. Anyway, um, it was really just having to adjust to the, the way they live their life, but it was never really awkward. The parents actually did everything they could to make me feel um, included and make me feel welcomed. They would actually take me to little family gatherings that they would have and little parties if they had any. They really did treat me like one of their own and this made me feel so at ease and I never felt uncomfortable with them, which was really nice. The only thing that was ever really awkward was like on the weekends when I would stay in and they were obviously here at the house. Like I had to set boundaries with the kids. They wanted to play with me on the weekends and I wanted nothing to do with them. It was my time off. So you just have to, you know, set your boundary on your time off. Like it's your time off. And the parents were actually good with being like, don't talk to Robin, it's her, her day off, her weekend off, don't talk to her. And the oldest daughter actually, whenever the youngest tried to talk to me, the oldest would be like, no, 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 it's Robin's day off. So that's really nice, they set that boundary for me. But if your family has a hard time doing that, like just set your boundary. It's your time off, you don't want nothing to do with them, leave if you have to. I actually, what I ended up doing at, in the end was um, just going on weekend trips, staying away, having nothing to do with these kids, and then coming back and then starting a new, a new week. But I love to have just the weekends off. So actually, that is something that I recommend is having money saved for weekend trips or for whenever you have your days off, go away. Get away, explore the country you're in, and yeah, that's that's what I recommend, is just saving money so that you're able to book hotels, book trains, do whatever it is to get away from the family on your days off, and explore the country you're in. What did you love most about your experience? Let's be real, I'm in Italy. I had the weekends to explore Italy, so I just, Every single weekend, I went somewhere. And I could honestly say that I've seen most of Italy, like the, the parts everyone knows about. And that was 1,000% my favorite thing about this experience is that I really immersed myself in the Italian culture and I went to different regions of Italy because Italy is built up of different regions and each region lives differently. Like, it's like a you go to a different region and it's like a different culture. It's super interesting and so I got to experience different regions of Italy and every single weekend I made an experience for myself and I made an effort to experience something new. And that really has been my favorite thing. And um, I'm learning Italian. Sto imparando italiano. Capisco un po' ma sto imparando a formare frasi. So I'm learning how to build sentences and I don't know if that made sense, but I'm learning. <laughs> and so this has been my favorite part of the experience is learning Italian and being in Italy and listening to actual conversational Italian and how people actually speak and how they live their lives. And I love the Italian culture. And so this has been my favorite part. I really want to come back to Italy for a few months in the future and just live here because mwah, I love Italy. But of course, another thing I've been I loved about this experience is getting a little glimpse of what parenthood is like. Although I probably don't want to have kids of my own, it was nice to get a little glimpse of what it looks like. No thank you. I did not enjoy this glimpse. 
I'm honestly, I'm so relieved to be going back home and after this, after today, know that I have no responsibilities. I have no children to t look after. I have only myself to look after and I am so happy about that. I think about me leaving and having the mom stay with the kids and I'm, I just feel so sorry for her. Like. I cannot imagine myself being a mom. Maybe this is really self-centered in me, but I'm just not ready to give up my life. And oh my goodness, these mothers, they give up their whole entire life just to raise these children. So yeah, no, it's not my life, but it was nice to have a little glimpse of that. And it was nice to be around kids and have them rely on you for their life. Like these kids literally relied on me to do everything for them. And so that was a really nice experience and it was nice to feel like a mother, even if it was just for three months. And that's it. That's like perfect for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna do this au pair thing, this motherhood thing, but it was nice to have a glimpse. <laughs> Any advice for future au pairs? My advice for future au pairs is do it. If you're considering becoming an au pair, 100% do it. This has been such a transformative experience for me. I honestly feel like a different person. Like I know this sounds so dramatic, but I really do feel like a different person and I feel like I understand other human beings a bit more. Like after this experience, I feel like I have a little bit of a maternal bone in my body now. Um, although I don't ever want to be around kids like this anymore. It was a really great experience to help develop um, as an adult, honestly. So yeah, I do recommend it, but my advice to you is to just be open, have an open mind, go into this experience wanting to learn and wanting to learn new things. Whether that be like learning about the culture you're going in or learning how to be a mom or anything just have an open mind that is my tip to you and just don't be afraid for me at the beginning it was 100 percent scary knowing there's this family waiting for me in italy and i have no idea who they are or what they do like i know nothing about them so at first it was a little scary but i just brushed off that fear i was like no it's gonna be fine everything's gonna be great and it honestly has been the experience of my life. If there's no reason for you to be afraid, don't be scared. Just go into the experience and have fun and just know that it's not a permanent thing. So yeah, you're there to learn. Anyway, that's my advice. <laughs> for me, what a day in an au pair life looked like, I would wake up at 7.20 in the morning. I had 10 minutes to get ready. I wake the kids up at 7.30, I change them, which was a challenge. Waking kids up in the morning is a nightmare. <laughs> and it was one of my f least favorite things to do. Um, get them dressed, take them downstairs to have breakfast, make them breakfast, make them brush their teeth, and then take them to the bus stop to go to school. And then from then I had all day to do whatever the heck I wanted. I usually would go down to the center of, it, of Siena and just explore. And then I didn't have to worry about them until 4.57 when I had to pick them up at the bus. And on certain days, I also had to take the girl to the dance school by bus. So we would have, we would take the city bus to go to her dance school and I would wait in the lobby with the moms and we would talk and then we'd go home, I'd make them dinner play with them, and then my other least favorite thing to do was put them down for bed. That was so hard. I think putting them down for bed was the most difficult thing out of this whole experience. It's like, they have so much energy built in them. It's so hard to get them to just like chill. That was my least favorite thing to do. I hated it. Every single night, I hated it, but I'm done. Last night was the last time I ever had to do that. Tonight I don't have to do it because I'm leaving. And it's bittersweet, but I will not miss this. Hated it. Even just thinking about it, like, Bleh. no, no. My least favorite part, but once we did that at 9.30, I was solid. And 
yeah that is really what my day looked like during the week and then during the weekend we raged you know i went i went hard on the wine <laughs> yeah i would forget all about kids i would drink some wine some april spritz and just explore a new city so yeah the week was definitely worth it for the weekend uh yeah that was what my day looked like and overall i had the best experience of my life will i do this again absolutely not will i have kids maybe not but this three month experience has been so worth it and if any of you are thinking about doing it i do recommend it i'm just i'm so happy to be leaving i'm so happy it's it's done it makes me so happy knowing that tomorrow i will have no responsibilities like just look after myself that's it but i will have no kids to look after i don't have to put anyone to sleep tonight and i don't have to wake anyone up in the morning tomorrow i did it i feel like i deserve a certificate i deserve some sort of diploma for this experience because holy crap i am gonna miss this room though like this morning i woke up and i was like oh my god this is the last time i wake up in this room and it definitely is a bittersweet moment, but I think it's more sweet than it is bitter. <laughs> I'm just so excited to go home to my mom and the dogs and just not have to look after kids anymore. I actually did meet another au pair in Venice and her experience was completely different to mine. She had older kids and she had less responsibilities. So she was actually really happy with her experience. I mean, I was also really happy, but I just had more responsibility and I had to do more. So every experience is different. You will 100% have a different experience to mine, but, but this was mine. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go pack because I still have a lot to do before I leave Italy. That was my little rant of my experience. And now my little vlog of me and Pisa and Florence. I will see you later. I have better vlogs coming up, I promise. But for now, mwah, sayonara. No more kids. Guess where I am. I made it to Pisa. <laughs> Having an espresso by the Tower of Pisa. <coughs> beautiful views, beautiful views. Very expensive coffee, but you know, worth it for this gorgeous view. Let me show you. in Florence but I'm running late for my food tasting so I'm I'm literally sprinting and I'm sweaty but I'm sweaty in Florence so I took the train from Pisa to Florence and I'm here I'm going to take a food tour oh my god where am I sorry for the bumpy film it's a bit of it's kind of chaos over here where am I going? Okay, keep going straight. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I gotta figure this out. And the big matcha is one of the great. Terrible going on with the uh, <laughs> with the climate, but delicious. <laughs> <laughs> A little late, but they arrived. Oh my god, they were so nice. Not a nice place. Yes. Mm. At the back, I just uh, I had mm. fingers, you know. Mm. Just, uh, <laughs> enjoy. It's so good. It's so good. Mm. Very good. You know, when I travel, it's the same. Food. Food. 
too. And uh, wine. Or, or beer. Yeah, <laughs> or beer. It depends on the mattress, but it's the best way to get in depth. I'm a Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We do on every trip. Food truck? Food, yeah. yes. Sure. I did one last week in Napoli. Mm. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. Very so, uh, good. The cheese is so good. And their seafood. Ooh, we were just talking about Naples. The Parma is a kind of sweet. This, mm. one, this one is uh, salty. Still doing that? What man do you like? Oh my god. We need to like that. Wow, that's a good one. Try the salted almond. Oh yeah, salted almond. <laughs> really good. That was really beautiful, but I felt like I could not get out. I could not find the exit at all. That was um, really complicated to find the exit, but I'm out. Hallelujah. Now I think I'm gonna go to Ponte Vecchio, which is the old bridge. So uh, let's do that. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was great, but is it wrong for me to say I'm not huge into museums like I like to save those for rainy days and it's just so beautiful outside so I just want to go walk around the streets you know what I mean I don't know anyways let's walk I think I've come to the conclusion that wine makes me super sleepy. I'm feeling super sluggish, so I think I'm gonna go get a, maybe a coffee, and then I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna go to Piazza del Duomo, um, explore, and then I do have to head out to Siena. I maybe only had like five hours in the city, but you know, it was enough. I'll be back. So beautiful. I mean, look at this beauty. <laughs> And the people in Italy are just so interesting. I love everyone. This is so great. Okay, let's get coffee. Let's go. Oh my god, it's freezing. Nice little cappuccino. I didn't bring my tripod, so I think it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So, sorry in advance. But um, here I am. The view is beautiful. Okay, let's keep walking. I think I'm gonna head back soon. Maybe I'll have an early dinner and then I will take the train. But this cappuccino, oh my God. It's so good. I realized that wine makes me really sleepy and sluggish. And it just kind of ruins the mood for the rest of the day. But also I love wine, so I don't know. I'm uh, I don't know what to do. Ti amo Italia. Okay, I just said that and a couple was right behind me. So that was kind of embarrassing, but also not because I do love Italy, so. Currently listening to Taylor Swift's new album and walking around this piazza, forgot what it's called. It's Florence at night, chef's kiss, beautiful. Some sketchy people looking at me with my camera and I'm being protective, but anyways, <gasps> ooh, okay, I found something. 
let me show you my goodness this is gorgeous I hope you can hear me oh my god okay are you ready for this I'm in Italy and I came to McDonald's listen I have been eating nothing but Italian food and I just your girl craved McDonald's and I don't regret it I was walking past and I got a whiff of french fries and chicken and I heard somewhere that McDonald's in Europe is healthier than the one in America so you know if I'm gonna have McDonald's it's gonna be here this is hitting different mm. Compare this to my lunch earlier. <laughs> I'm going back to Siena. The train station is chaos. My feet hurt. My goodness. I can't feel my feet. <laughs> 